Hey everyone, it's Kirk McLean here, and you're watching Clay's Canucks Commentary. Hey Canucks fans, and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary Live, presented to you by Van City Experts Real Estate. I am your host, Clay, Emo Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It is Tuesday night, April the 9th. If you're new, Here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for Daily Connects Insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. There is no... The Canucks didn't play tonight. The Canucks didn't play tonight. and But a, a couple teams that the Canucks have their eye on in terms of playoff ramifications, they did play. So we'll get into that. And yes, there for the first time I came in here, it was like a ghost town. Because usually I walk in here and there's at least two three four people chatting i was the first one in the in the chat today and then i thought i got scared maybe i messed something up or i i, I messed up the link but no we're going strong i see uh, uh you guys piling in here right now i see people piling in on x which is great as well so the plan is to welcome patrick johnson of the province in i'm not sure if he's gonna we'll see i texted him and it's a little late for him as a as a father of with young children. So we'll see if he pops backstage. And if he doesn't, then you're stuck with me for the whole 40 minutes. So yes, tonight it's Tuesday night. It's the night where I have to end by between 11 and 11.40, 11.45, because I have to get to my church um, for my prayer hour. But uh, we should still have a lot of time to get a lot of great Vancouver Canucks discussion in. So moderators. Do what you need to do to keep this a safe and respectful place. Members, as legends, Hall of Fame and franchise members, thanks for your support. As always, had great chats with uh, legendary Lucas Gates and Hall of Fame member Justin Credible today. I chatted with them earlier tonight as, um, yeah, as we were um, as part of our, our bi-monthly bi one-on-one. Wait a sec. Ir so, Irvin, you are in both chats. So, I want to see how that works. Oh, okay. So somehow you are chatting in in X as well, which is awesome. Thanks for being on both on both on both venues. And yeah, Fangor, I hope you're okay. There's a lot going on today. So moderators, thank you. Legends, franchise members, Hall of Fame members, thank you. I see Carol donated 10 memberships. I'll get to that in a second. But for everyone else, no matter where you're watching from, whether my beautiful neighborhood of Seafston in Richmond in the city. Lower mainland, province, country, continent, or around the world. Thank you for being here. You know that I know that you could be watching anyone else, doing anything else, getting ready for work, school, or read all three. But the fact that you are here with me right here, right now, tonight, know how much I always appreciate you. And I never, ever take you for granted. Fitness says, why you on X? Just trying something new. I uh, started this last night and it, it artificially bumps all my numbers up. I see a really good looking guy backstage. Hopefully he can hear me. I'll get to you in two seconds. PJ, thank you for making, not sure if I woke you up or whatever, but I'm glad you're here. We can talk about that in a second before I bring, see, now you see what you see on my face. You guys is relief because my awesome guest is here. He's smiling backstage. And I'm going to bring you on PJ. Give me two minutes. This is how you can get involved tonight. You can subscribe to this channel. So you get active in the chat section. PJ will do a, a 10 minute Q and a at the end. So get ready with your questions. Like the video. There are uh, 80 of you in here already. Half of you on YouTube, half of you on X. You can hit the like button on either of those platforms. It helps me out. You can leave a donation. You can gift a membership like Carol just did. You can buy your own membership. You can upgrade your membership. You can use your triple M your monthly membership message, and you can rate and review if you're listing on a podcast platform. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to recognize Carol's awesome donation of 10 franchise memberships, people coming back to the CCC crew, which is awesome. Then for any other donations or cool stuff that happens, I will acknowledge them at the end of the stream uh, so we don't interrupt the, the time with me and PJ. And remember, this is the night where I got to get to my church by midnight. So we have to wrap up tonight between 1140 and and 11.45. But before we do that, I want to show some love to the legendary Carol Bovenlander. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Carol gifts 10 memberships, the equivalent of $50 donation. So you guys all have franchise membership for a month. Fitness, JGP, Roland, Tyler, Brian, Marcus, and Kel, Luisa, and Elston. So welcome back to some of you. Welcome to the first time uh, for many of you. And good timing because we are having a members-only live stream on Thursday. So without further ado... There's a good friend of mine. I actually met him through my season ticket partner, Mike, who I talk about often. These guys taught together. Uh, Mike stuck with me and Patrick Johnson has gone on to bigger and better things. So what we're going to do is we're going to pepper him with questions. I'm going to for the first 15, 20 minutes about his experience covering the Canucks, his playoff predictions, all those type of things. And then we'll spend the, save the last 10 minutes for all of you um, to ask him, um, ask him some questions. So he has graciously agreed to stay with me as long as he can stay awake. And I promise I'll let him go by 20 to 12. So please welcome my good friend from the province. You know him as Rising Action, and you hear his silky, smooth voice at all of the post game availabilities. This is Mr. Patrick Johnson. Hey, PJ. <laughs> hey, buddy. Sorry. I was sitting there. I was watching. I've been watching this old movie called Blowout. Brian okay. Classic. And I was sitting there going, Oh, I guess the movie's over. What should I do? And I looked down at my phone. I'm like, Oh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> So if I didn't text you, would you have remembered, you think? No, no. I'm glad okay. you reminded me. Well, thank you for uh, trusting well, me with your number. Let's be honest, Clay. 11 o'clock on a Tuesday night? Like... Okay. Hear me out, brother. Hear me out, brother. <laughs> you know that I'm a night owl. You know that my kids are a little bit older than your kids, right? So we've established that. The biggest thing really is, is um, at 11 o'clock, I'm done bowling. I'm done my church work. I'm home from the game. I've done my work. So I, I'm kind of trying to fill that void that of the sports page from back when we were growing up, that kind of thing. Sure. It's also that you're just a mad bat. That's all it is. No, that, that too. And yeah, I, and we have people from overseas watching. We have people from across Canada. So I'm so grateful that they yeah. navigate these weird time zone changes just to be with us tonight. So let's just cool. get it out of the way. Cause all of this really, all it is, is <laughs> yes, that's, that's all we need. We're done. We're done. Well, actually, I like this view better. No, that makes us look too big. We're going to go back That's to this all, view. Whatever. <laughs> all right, brother. Tell everyone uh, what you do and where they can find your work. Uh, I think you already covered it. Yeah, I cover the Canucks for, for the province and the Sun and Post Media. Um, I do still tweet from time to time. I, it's a horrible venue. It used to be great. Now it's, I don't even know. Anyway, yeah, at Rising Action, province.com. Subscribe awesome. and subscribe. It keeps me in business. <laughs> uh, I also show up on Scaris and Price and sometimes on Canucks Conversation for the Nation Network. Yes. Uh, my, so we... my alma mater, if you will, because I was originally at Canucks Army and oh. now they've come full circle and they're now sort of in the same great uh, stratosphere of Canucks. Coverage. Yes. And between Scaris and Price and Canucks Army, a lot of us. Yeah. Here. Exactly. The stimulus story. We're all trying to do a lot of the same things. And there's, I always say there's a lot of room for professional content creators like you and want to be content creators like me. <laughs> hey, fans got to take fans are allowed, right? Yeah, That's, awesome. You know, engaging with you guys is important. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. So basically uh, tell me what's it like covering the team this year, as opposed to <laughs> last <laughs> previous years, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I was talking to Connor Garland uh, this morning, in fact, and just I followed up about last night. I said, you know, let's be honest. Like, think about where your season started. You know, however you want to frame that. Wasn't an easy spot. We know that. You come to this point, people are chanting your name. And, you know, you, nobody could have imagined that. And he goes, no. You know, nobody could. Uh, but really, the cool thing is, my, you know, it happens late on the East Coast. My parents wake up, and they hear that. And you're just like... All these things are real, man. And like, you know, I sent talked to Archer She Loves and like, look at that guy. Like, you know, he, you know, I, when he first got called up, you know, I sat and talked to him and he was pretty honest. He's like, listen, I'm number three guy. Like, I get it. You yeah. know, he, he has to find new motivations. And, and, you know, now he's played three games and he's played really well and the coach is really happy with him. And I said, yeah. do you think about the big picture? Like, is that something you can, he goes, no, you can't do that. Like, you just can't. Like, in the end, it really is. It's the opposite, right? Like, they take it day to day because, mm -hmm. you know, guys don't want to get too high, too low. You know, he thinks about day to day because he's like, there's nothing. There's so much of this that he can't control, right? Yes. So, yes. so you know, there's a lot of that. 
in the background of all this. And, and I, you know, I, I, I wrote a story last week that I hope people found. And if they didn't hope you go find it, but connects team culture. Mm. And Tyler Myers has, has been on the team almost as long as I've been covering the team. In fact, sorry, he has been on the team. No, he's been on the team almost as long as I've been covering the team. 2019. Right. right. right? And, you know, there's been, there, you know, initially it was pretty good. And then there's been a lot of this. Yes. And I, I put it to him. I said, you know, I, I put it to him a while ago, but there's been this kind of ongoing dialogue that he gets now. And I said, you know, Tyler, you know, all these things that you guys talked about in terms of uh, needing to like care more and, you know, get into it more and whatever, you know, we need to get dialed down on all these things. Right. Now they're actually happening. Right. <laughs> What's the difference? Like, let's be honest here. They're actually working. And, you know, you got into that, just the belief in each other and the ability to talk to each other and the connection with each other and the way the coaching staff has empowered them. You know, there's a lot of sort of stuff from my teaching life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you mentioned our old buddy, Mike McBurney, who, you know, Mike and I trained his teachers together. But like yeah. the, the idea of emotional intelligence and, and recognizing that that the people, in, the kids in your charge, the young people in your charge need different approaches and you have to want them to come to you and have how they operate. And, and Rick talk has been amazing at that. And, you know, it all adds up and that this is way better, you know, like you're trying to shine a turd, you know, you, the, the, each season's had its, you know, 18, 19, like that team just wasn't very good. 19, yeah. 20, they, well, obviously it was the COVID season. We didn't get to cover the best part of the season, which was in Edmonton with no one. I mean, yes. and my colleague Ed Willis got to go there, but like, I didn't go. I could have gone, but I wasn't interested. Like, what was I going to do? I, know I had newborn, all that stuff. And yeah. then, you know, 21 was awful because the team, wouldn't, you know, ownership wasn't spending any money. So yeah. The season was terrible. Started on the wrong foot. The whole team got sick. Yeah. You know, all that. Uh, just absolute chaos off ice. That which spilled into the next season. You know, people forget how bad the beginning of the 2021-22 season was. Yeah. Couldn't kill a penalty. Couldn't win. Nothing was going right. They couldn't score. It was awful. Yeah. And then, you know, Bruce Brudeau comes in and we have that, oh, well, you know, this is a little more fun. And then they have that kind of wild finish of the season. Yeah. Almost got, like, think about, it was absurd. They were they were in it until the last week of the season. Like, it was insanely, like, minute, tiny, tiny chance of making the playoffs. Yeah. Right? But, yeah. you know, there were tweets. I was tweet. I would, I would explain, here's what needs to happen. They were in it until the last three games of the season. Now they needed to run the table, and I can't remember what it was. They needed Vegas to lose in a right. particular way, Dallas, and all this stuff. And you know, at one point, Irfan and Kafar said, "Patrick, stop!" I'm like, "What am I? Why? I have nothing else. This is where we're at." <laughs> and then you know, we roll into last season, where obviously everything was a disaster. We're we're I think we were at game. They go on that season over road trip. They play in Edmonton. I didn't go there. I went yep. to Philly. I was on Philly, Washington, Columbus. I think it was Minnesota. They went over. That, and they were over. <laughs> but we were in Philly. Game two. And Harmon Dial turns to me and goes, PJ, I can't do this again. <laughs> and then it happened. It was nuts. It was awful. And then Jim Rutherford is ripping the coach. Yes. And the coach is the coach for two more months. And, you know, yeah. I think I've told this story before. Maybe I haven't. I'll give you the exclusive. We're in, you know, I went the last road trip that I've worked because post media is we're not traveling right now, which, you know, is frustrating. I will be honest, but sometimes the bosses make the choice and be clear. It's not my boss. It's bosses over there. Anyway. Um, anyway, we're not traveling. The last road trip I'm on, right? I go to Winnipeg. I decide I'm going to cover the whole road trip. And, and I didn't know they didn't, they didn't, they hadn't said anything at this point. So I go to Winnipeg and it was, I can't remember if they won or lost. There was a big pregame ceremony involved, you know, Ukraine, all the stuff. It was very emotional. No, they lost. In the post game, we're standing in this hallway and we're waiting. We go do the drum. We do our kind of, oh, you know, and talk to some players, and, oh, you know, whatever. And then we go out in the hallway. And I'm standing here, and they got the backdrop that everyone always sees when they're on the road. They always stand behind the in front of the backdrop, do the coach. So we're waiting for Bruce, and he's in his little the little office they have. And who comes along the hallway? And I'm doing hand signals for all these people listening, you know, yeah. to the later podcast. Anyway, 
Jim Rutherford comes walking down the hall, and Bruce Rudrow happens to just come out of his office at the exact same time. And I remember standing there going, Oh my god, because like this is deep, like these guys aren't talking to each other, and they just it was like literally ships passing in the night. They just kind of they tried not to look at each other. I remember thinking, What this is go this is what is going on? And of course, these guys are gonna sit on a plane, you know, everything's wow. terrible. Anyway, Bruce does his con press conference. Anyway, I, the next morning I get up. Yeah. And I'm like, I have made this choice. I had booked it. I figured it out. There was one way to get from Winnipeg to Pittsburgh in time for practice in Pittsburgh on Monday morning, which meant getting up, getting on like a 6 a.m. flight from Winnipeg to Minneapolis, running across the airport, getting to another plane, ending up in Pittsburgh, timing it out with the, the cab from the airport. The Marriott I'm staying is across the street from the rink. I actually have time to drop my bag at the hotel and go across the street. And by the way, the hotel had just reopened. I was like their third customer. The Wi-Fi doesn't work, they say. And I'm like, going, <laughs> well, okay. Anyway, go across the street. Practice happens. I'm the only person. And of course, it's the day after. And there's what's what are you going to say? I talked to Bruce last night. What is he going to say? And it's Bruce's birthday. And Bruce comes off the ice, and I'm the only reporter there. Actually, it's not quite true. John Garrett and, and John Shorthouse and Dan Murphy were there. But, like, you know, I'm the only guy that's going to pause it. And Bruce looks at me and goes, oh, you're here. And I'm like, you know what, Bruce? Forget it. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. I don't need you today. And Bruce just looks at me and goes, oh, not a lot of happiness around here. Oh. Oh. That story is is gut wrenching on so many levels. You made you know, that effort. Oh, wow. No, it was fine. You know, whatever. You know, like, listen. You know, sometimes like this is how the stories happen, right? Like, you don't. Not everything needs to be. Here's my recorder, and why don't you speak into the microphone? You know, you yeah. you got to pick up these things, right? So anyway, you know, and like life carried on, and you know, we covered, and it, you know, it was never boring, right? Let's be clear. It yeah. has never been boring covering this team. Yep. But this is yep. a lot more fun. Clay. Yeah. Yes. They're going to well, be in the playoffs. Like well, that's we're going to oh, we're going to hear people... streets, you know, I know you're one of the guys. We're going to hear streets again. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's you know, I'm listen, I cover the team. I don't cheer for the team. It, obviously the team winning makes my life better. I hope for you do if you cheer for anyone, you cheer for some of the players. You cheer for Brock Besser, right? Yeah. You want these guys to succeed. Right, as human beings, yes, yes, absolutely. So, uh, people love the story in the chat. Thank you for for sharing that. That's a nice little peek behind the curtain, Patrick. That was an amazing synopsis of the past five seasons. So, uh, I think people are smart enough to re recognize that's why a we're so excited, and that's why b the Canucks are charging four hundred bucks for a playoff ticket. <laughs> Like it's crazy. It's crazy. But to, the fact that we're scoreboard watching, we're trying to figure out if Edmonton can catch us, uh, you know, on, on April 9th. That's pretty cool. What a, what a 180. That's pretty, oh. that's pretty but to be clear, remember, yep, it's six points. It's not five. Right. Does everyone right. understand this? Because of because the tiebreaker? Canucks have all the tiebreakers. Okay. Right? So Edmund has to fully clear the Canucks. So, Perfect. so even as I think, I mean, was it J-Pad put it up? Yeah. You know, the Canucks can go two and two. Mm -hmm. Right, and and Edmonton still has to go. Would have to go five and one, right? Right, like I mean, listen, these are not the ways you want to be talking. You want to win to the playoffs. You want to win your yes. way in, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nope. By the way, everybody. Good. By the way, Jesse is perfectly allowed to not like me. I fully respect him saying, and you know what? I would like to see Clay do my do my job. I couldn't do Clay's job. Let's be clear on that. And I couldn't do PJ's job. No, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. And, and I think Jesse is uh, apologetic. I tried to do. I tried to delete no, no, it before no. you saw it. <laughs> no, 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 no censorship. Oh, no Believe censorship. Me. Let, let me put it this way, Clay. On Saturday. Yep. Okay. I wrote about the Bexa story from the the, the anecdote from Hagen and Canada, just saying, yeah, listen, we we knew playing Tampa was a better matchup. And yes. so I wrote a thing about it. And I, you know, I mentioned a couple of people. And I said, come on, you got to. And I was like, yep. And so I went in. I said, just remind everybody about it. I'm not saying the Canucks lost because of Colin Campbell. I'm just saying Colin yeah. Campbell did all these things and then was still in charge of the referees. And it was Tony Gallagher who mentioned this 2011. Anyway, I wrote this story. Anyway, Sunday afternoon, Bruins Twitter found it. And so, like, <laughs> 
the lot was today, Tuesday. And yeah. it's just, I mean, it's just, you know, people are people people are entitled to their opinions. It's a free country. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that, that thank you. That was a perfect uh setup. Jesse, don't You're... apologize. It's <laughs> fine. See, Jesse, PJ is giving you the permission to say whatever you want. So yeah, I agree. Don't apologize. I love it. I love it. All right, let's do 10 minutes of questions from me, and then we'll do 10 minutes of questions from from the over 250 people in here which is amazing see pj brings numbers okay let's um how are you feeling talk to me talk to me about linholm and about demco you've been around the team you've been probably seeing and hearing more stuff than we as the casual fans uh is linholm playing tomorrow is that your guess in demco saturday that's kind of what people are my, thinking now yeah my bet is linholm like yeah he's got a little so you know i mean it's it's there there's no yeah. denying it Got a little, uh, so you know, he's got a little extra something on his wrist, like a guard, yeah. And yeah. so I asked him, I and mean, he said that he used to work brutal when iMac talked to him on Friday. I think it was yeah. Friday. And so I said, "What was brutal about it?" He goes, "He just couldn't do anything." I think it, I, I he obviously strained something, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. You're you you know bowling. Your wrist's important, right? Like, it <laughs> yeah. can hurt. <laughs> anyway, he had, he's got a little thing on it, but like obviously he's feeling a lot better because he's skating his part of the room. I would expect I, I they didn't have full lines because uh Pedersen, yeah. Besser, Miller, and Hughes were all away. They all right, took the day right, off. Right. Um right. but I, I would bet that Lindholm plays tomorrow. Right. Okay, so let's say let's fast forward to two weeks or from Wednesday. now. Okay, awesome. Let's say let's yeah. say let's fast forward to two weeks from now. It's opening night. One school of thought, we know that Tockett likes to go his three centers down the middle. So you could yeah. run Miller, Garland, Joshua, PD Besser, Hoglander, and then maybe Linho between the, between the two Russians, a putt close in the yeah. KO, and, and then yeah. Tudor and Blue. I think that's or, likely, yeah. Yeah, okay, I was going to say, or yeah. I love it, load up the lot of line and go Lindholm between. Not happening. Uh, who, nope. Not happening. Won't happen. Tell me why not. Rick, Rick doesn't do that. That's not what he wants. He's already, he's basically told, he, I can't even remember what game, I mean, it was, a, it was a few weeks ago. Yeah. You know, he kind of got asked about it. He goes, you guys want me to do this, but just no. Like, he will do it from time to time. It's, you know, yeah. it's sort of one of those, it's a look they have, but it's not yeah. something he likes. He likes Pedersen. He likes Miller and, yeah. and essentially likes Lindholm on, okay. on different lines. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then, yeah, it, just like you can always go to the lot of line, I guess you could always go uh, Garland, Joshua, uh, Bluger, if you absolutely had to, if you needed to throw that line out there. But I, uh, I think I think at the end of the day, like, yeah. it's kind of amazing. Bluger only has six goals, right? Like, he obviously was yeah. hurt for a while. Um, but, like, Bluger has been a fourth-line player. Right. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't have the pop in his stick. No. Um, you know, even, even if... You know, there was a one point where I was like, "Oh, maybe he will." Patrick Alvey was like, "Oh, he, last summer, oh, I could think he scored 15 goals," and yeah. you're like, "Huh?" And it early, you know, there was a point you're like, "Oh," but no, he is yeah. no. So, so just to finish that thought off, if we agree that it's going to be basically Lindholm taking Bluger spot between the two Russians, then do you run a fourth line of Bluger, Suter, and who? Any of Lafferty, PDG, Amon, kind of thing? Oh, sorry. Say that again. Yeah. So if we put um, if we put Lindholm between oh. the two Russians, Podkolzin yes. and Mikhail on yeah. the third line, yeah. your fourth line is who? Bluger, Suter, and any of Lafferty, Amon, PDG. No, I, guess, I think right? it's Lafferty. I think it's okay. Lafferty. Yeah. I think yeah. Lafferty's the guy. Um, yeah. You know, he was asked a bit about him today, mm -hmm. and and he just likes. I mean, it's, it's the sort of size speed combo, and yeah. and I and and talk it specifically mentioned how Lafferty how important. Lafferty was to the Leafs in their in their playoff playoffs last year, right? So right. and then you know a guy I think that they at least management knows well from from Pittsburgh. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think that's more than likely how it lines up. And I, you know, for a team that doesn't have a ton of speed, that's important. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys, you saw PJ last night how um, three of the goals were with or at least two of them with both Petey and Garland, the two biggest yeah. guys on the team, standing in front of the net. Yes. Is that just is that sustainable or is that just a yeah, look that they exploited yeah, against screening Vegas? The goal is, is, um, is screening the goal. Everyone sort of has this, oh, you gotta, they remember Chara, right? Like they'll all oh, put the big guy, you know, but it's about so much more. And, and, you know, and one of the funny things, one of the best guys at screening, you know, think back, like there's been there partly cause there haven't been a ton of goals lately. Yeah. Um, but, but you look at Brock Besser, like there have been yeah. a couple goals in the last, I would say three weeks where Brock Besser was the guy providing the screen. 
yeah. and and the way he's become a net front presence. So you know, Brock's not a tall guy. Sure. Petey is taller and he's thicker is the wrong word, but yeah. bulkier than people give him credit for. He's not sure. the he's still I think listed at one seventy six, and there's absolutely no way he's only one seventy six. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's at least he's like six two now. Like he's a tall guy. Sure. Yeah, Garland's clay emo sized. You know. <laughs> And thanks for nailing my last name properly. You are the only guy who does that. That's why you're my favorite. Man. Hey, awesome. I've long gotten credit for that. It's the thing I'm proud of. <laughs> People get your name right. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I know I'm going to bring you on after the season ends where we can talk about who's coming back and for how much because I, I, I yeah, think yeah. it's kind of moot to talk about it now. But I, I want to ask you, um, build me the case for and against the three potential first-round matchups for us, L.A., Nashville right. Vegas. Who do you think we're going to play, mm. and who do you think we match up best? And there might be the same answer for both. <laughs> I, don't, I I I really don't know. I mean, I, it lines up right now that they're playing Nashville. Yeah. Um. L. A. Lost tonight to Anaheim. Yeah. 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 Um. I mean, we've seen L. A. L. A. I think is the worst case scenario. Yeah. Just because they're so hard to break down. Yeah. And um. You know the Canucks have a good, like a really nice bunch of forwards, but the way the Canucks create goals with those point shots, with the screens, you know, I think LA is sort of best tuned to to defend against that. Um, mm -hmm. And and they're just so uninterested in opening it up. If you think a yeah. bit about, like, think about honestly, like last night's game, partly what happened in the third period. It's not that the Canucks are like this incredible rush team. But they were able to open it up, and they were able to turn it—not necessarily into track meet, but just get Vegas moving a little bit. Yeah, and I think yeah. that there's risk with that. You know, there is the, like Taka's not afraid of risk. You know, but he wants his team to be playing smart. Yes, and 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 so that's that's kind of where that's where they match up. The or sorry, the Canucks match up better with Vegas. I'd say that yeah. there's, there's just and the other thing about Vegas is that like they're, they're tired. You know, they won the Stanley mm. Cup. It's tough to re there's a reason why it's tough to repeat. Um, they're obviously dealing with some injuries. Yeah. And you know, they yeah. I Nashville to me, I I know if, I I'm surprised more people haven't said it. Nashville, I just there's a reason why the Canucks beat them every time this season. Um <laughs> they are well coached, they yeah. work hard. Um but um, they lost tonight. I mean, I saw someone nailing. I think it was Adam Vigna who, co who's, who covers the, the Predators. And he was just like, they've struggled defending the middle. Mm -hmm. What do the Canucks do? <laughs> so I think that's that's why that's the best one. I mean, the LA is the, like I said, so, uh, you know, LA, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and the, the other thing that scares me about LA is like, they still got Kopitar, right? He's still yeah. the height of his power. The only thing that LA doesn't have going for is their goalies, right? Right. Um, right. so, right. but they're so smart defensively, yeah. um, yeah. that probably is not going to hurt them as much as you might think. And then, yeah. And so I'm just trying to think about, yeah. So Vegas, I mean, Vegas obviously has incredible top end talent. They've won yeah. the Stanley cup. Yeah. Um, I'm just more focused on the fact that they are, why they're struggling. They've struggled this year, partly because of injuries, partly just because mm -hmm. of fatigue, partly, you know, just yeah. this, that, and the other, uh, well said. Yeah. Awesome. And before we go to the people, I have uh, a quick two-parter based on your Instagram. So we know of your, uh, there's PJ ties, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Talking yeah. About your ties. yeah I, that, that's kind of been retired, but sure. Right. Because it's Maybe I'll bring it back to the playoffs. Maybe I'll bring it back okay. to the playoffs. Awesome. Awesome. It's been retired in favor of alignment for the national <laughs> anthem. So where, just really quickly, just a minute, where did that come from and who oh. has had the best alignment? <laughs> it's been a terrible year for alignment. Um, I would say the best alignment was towards his Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah. And I, I remember whoever I was next to, because they know it's a, it's a bit of an ongoing joke. Yeah, I like, was, I'll take awesome. a picture and I'll assess what they're doing. The Canucks have ended up always on by the boards. Although last year, and I blew it. I'm, or was it, or I guess it was two years ago. Or was it last year? 
when was Alex Chase on last in the Canucks? Two years ago. Oh, yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, yeah. He would always stand over by himself like, on the far side. <laughs> and I never got a chance to ask him. But anyway, the Canucks kind of bunch up because they got the kids, then they have the boards and whatever. <laughs> and so I give them credit for at least being like lined up. I really dream of teams standing right in the middle of the blue line, nicely lined between the dots. Yeah, it's just yeah. aesthetic. I don't really care. But I did take note that John Tortorella, you know he would have practiced. He said, guys, this is where we're going to... Can I swear here? Uh, do whatever you it's want. Family... Sure. This is where you're going to effing stand, God. Okay. You know, blah, blah, blah. You can well, make a stand and, you know, make... And so they were the they were somewhat coordinated. That's the oh, only thank, one that really... Thank that's you for self... Yeah, this isn't Sakaris and Price, so thank you for self-censoring yourself. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> If you have no clue what we just talked about on your Instagram, it's Patty on the Road still, or is it Patty J at Patty J on the Road? Yeah, bit of Patty J on the Road, bit of a misnomer one, right now, but yeah, yeah. One thing that PJ does is he when we're uh, yeah he takes pictures. I try to yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a behind the scenes kind of thing. I mean, it, it's yeah. like I, I try it. to show stuff you don't necessarily get to see. Here's the angle, you know, like I'll the the room that we end up doing the post game uh, coach yeah. press conference. It's right outside. Um, you know, where Murph in some of the, if that new, if you've noticed, there's a new like wooden wall that says yeah. Vancouver Canucks hockey club. And that's where Murph does his post game uh, chats usually. Gosh, and, uh, and, and so our room is just the, the room that we do. The, it's not our room to be clear. Uh, the room we do our, our coaches interviews. Yeah. is right next to that. So I'll, I'll take a picture who's there. Or, you know, if I see something funny in the hall or, Love it. You know, what have you. I try I try Love to it. take people. But, it, you know, it's there's only so many views of Rogers Arena once you've been there a whole bunch. That's true. That's true. So check it out. Patty J on the road. That's Instagram. And on X, it's Rising Action. Speaking of X, there are 180 people watching there. There's another. The Disney uh, people. The Disney people chatting. They need to get Genie Plus. That's what you do. <laughs> See, Don't mess this around. is why PJ is so good. He's not only engaging with me, but he's also yeah, keeping Genie tabs Plus. on the chat. So Jesse. It's not that's called Fast Pass anymore. It's Genie there Plus. you go. All right, so last 10 or 12 minutes. Now your questions for PJ, we will put them, I'll highlight them, and we will ask them, and then we're going to wrap this thing up by quarter two because I got my holy hour to get to. So what questions? Oh, here's the easy one for Fangirl. Start us off. Who's your favorite player? For You can use whatever definition you want. Your favorite player on the current ah, roster. That's a good one. Um, I mean, Connor Garland is so much fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, he's fun. I mean, uh, who's my favorite player? Garland's a good one. Garland's a good one. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to think of like most quotable, great yeah. truth teller. I mean, Ian Cole's hilarious because he knows the role. Like he knows everyone comes asking questions. So Wagner and I were joking with him today about about uh, about how tough is it to play in the playoffs, Ian Cole? And he goes, Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, all, that's... All the, you know, whatever. I um, love it. Love it. Yeah. Do the Canucks have the players to beat a one-three-one that LA might uh, put out there? Well, did you, I mean they didn't like lack for scoring opportunities, right? Right, like right. they got the zone entries. Um, yeah, it's not the one-three-one. I think honestly, it's yeah. not the one-three-one. It's it is the way they box out. That sure. to me is the biggest challenge. Good, Pastor Daniel says, "Do you think the Canucks have uh, kind of peaked already? Not in terms of the season, but the entire season. Will they make such a run next year, or is this?" their best chance. Yeah. I mean, I think you can make, yeah, I think you can make the argument that first half was so wild. So many good things happened. Um, mm. th that technically, yes, I, th I mean, listen, if they win the Stanley cup, I will eat my words and whatever <laughs> the people, whatever Jesse wants me to do, um, I will do, but let's just be realistic, right? Like 16 teams make the playoffs and 15 yeah. teams don't win. Right. Yeah. The odds are against you inherently. Um, so listen, I feel comfortable saying that. I hope I'm wrong because covering the Stanley Cup would be pretty fun. Um, yeah. but I think the thing to understand, Daniel, is 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 go back to the deadline and a bit of a question I asked I asked uh Patrick Alvine at the, at the deadline press conference, which was essentially, you know, how did Pedersen's signing change? Mm -hmm. what happened here because they never did they basically didn't do anything you know there had we had all had this impression i'm not you know you talk to sources and people connected to the team what's the mood what are people thinking what you know what, what, are, what are the odds of and the the thought was all in right this is it we don't know what's gonna happen we don't know what Pedersen's intention is but if he goes through the deadline not having signed a contract we have to assume he wants to leave 
And yeah. so in that scenario, then yes, this is it. That's all. But now by resigning him, they've got a three-year window because that's how long. I mean, I guess Demko's got two more. I can't even remember. Anyway, but it's three years on Hughes. And yeah. that is the one that matters. So gotcha. you got three years to work with. So they didn't have to like do everything. They have to throw right. everything at the wall. Um, you know, and they're still going to have to make some choices. Like they'll have to make a decision on Hronek. They'll have to make yeah. a decision on Zdorov. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that sort of thing. So, so no, I think, I, th I mean, it's repeating success is always hard, but like, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Let's look at the, the, the very top guy. Jim Rutherford has always had success year to year to year. And obviously the last few years in Pittsburgh was a bit of decline, but like when the yeah. team was surging and the team certainly is surging, they were really able to sustain that. So that that's the other thing I would point Awesome. To. Yeah. Demko's got two after this and um, Hughes has three. Is Tockett going to win the Jack Adams? Um, I, I, I think so. I mean, I don't like the Jack Adams is, uh, not a media award, so it's hard to judge. It's, um, it's the broadcasters. So, okay. you know, it kind of depends on, on who pays attention. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think everyone's been very impressed with, with the, with the Canucks, uh, season, the, the late sort of stumbles. I mean, I think if you look at if you look at the way the sort of season has ended, like listen, if Pittsburgh makes it, like is Mike Sullivan gonna get some you know yeah. like consideration? Like I, I I think he is. I really do think talk it is because he's it's been such a fantastic story. I think the overall um assessment outside the market is still very upbeat, very positive. Like, hey, look at how great the Canucks are gonna win the division. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah I, I think he remains the favorite for that. Who's your favorite non Canuck player to either cover or to watch? <laughs> um, to cover or to watch. It's funny, you know, I was, um, uh, I was, it was the stars were in town the other day and they don't have Alex Radulov anymore. I used to love watching Alex Radulov play. Oh, like, interesting. He just kind of bully, but you know, he just kind of would bully his way around, make stuff happen. Um, I mean, it's Nathan McKinnon right now. I mean, yeah. obviously, McDavid is amazing. Um, yeah. There's something about the McKinnon energy and just the way he uses his bulk to get himself into the spot, then to accelerate. Yeah. Uh, he's just so he's so amazing. Awesome. You are the chair or the president of the the board, right? Or the I'm, I'm the chair of our of the Vancouver chapter of right. the Professional Hockey Writers Association. Yes, that does and and. Regard that's independent of you having a vote for the awards too, right? Well, the, the PHWA, the yeah. membership of the PHWA for the for the bulk of the awards, the, sorry, let me start again. The bulk yeah. of the awards are voted on by the membership of the PHWA. That's a that's essentially of which you are the president. Uh, yeah, of, I'm the president. Well, I'm the of Vancouver, right? Frank Cervelli yes. the overall president of all yeah. of it. Um, but yeah, our membership are the are the voters for yeah. the for the mostly right. what so yes i vote for norris and yes i vote for hughes awesome um, so you vote for and and viper i don't think that pj i don't think it works where you can actually lower someone else's chances though no so no you 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 put five names yeah. up so it's one two three right. four five right gotcha. so yeah i could put kale mccarr five to give him one point in the right thing I, listen i think i i i really I, I think people have seen what hughes has done um i i think that the the season he's having has resonated and I, I really am going to have a hard time imagining he doesn't win. We just partly because you haven't seen as I mean, McCarr's had a good season, but you haven't seen as many like highlight reel. Holy smokes, can you believe what this guy did? Mm -hmm. Kind of moments. Yossi's got, I mean, people are, have, you know, I mean, Nashville wouldn't be where they wouldn't be where they are now without Yossi. Um, you're still going to yeah. see some sort of headman or Adam Fox love. I mean, Adam Fox obviously playing on a great team. Maybe he's gotten yes. a little bit uh, subsumed there, but. But yeah, like I think Hughes Hughes has just had the most impactful, most impressive, most standout season. All right, very good. Quick answer for this one, please. Your instincts about Hronix signing or not, or what it's going to be. Quick, like without rushing you. <laughs> well, I guess I just did there. I'm 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 skeptical. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, is there any way that Juleson replaces a Kolar Zadorov as and and starts on opening night of the playoffs? I think at the end of the day, no. Um, the, the 11 forward 7D question came up again this morning because talking it sort of teased it a little bit 
I think he's thought about it, you know, especially having Juleson as a bit of a PK specialist. Yes. But that means that means you're taking Lafferty out, and I think he likes Lafferty a lot. So I, yeah. I think it's I, – I think they haven't done it, and that's why they haven't done it, and I wouldn't expect they'll do it. Gotcha. Uh, Do you have an idol in the sports media landscape that growing up or someone you emulated? Uh, well, I mean, local. it's funny. You know, like I, I, the story I always tell was when I was, I don't know, about – 15 or 16. I'm like, I'm a kid who, you know, grew up reading the paper and like, you know, my mom, my mom jokes that I learned to read by reading the sports section. Um, but you know, I was probably about 15 or 16 and, a, a, a buddy's mom, I recited something that I think I'd read in, in the paper and a buddy's mom said, Oh, Pat, you know, you really should be a sports journalist. And I remember thinking, Oh, geez, I can do better than that. And yet, here I am, sports <laughs> journalist. Uh, Archie McDonald, the old Vancouver Sun columnist, yep. was a big fan of his. Um, I always did enjoy, I mean, we got the sun at my house. Um, mm -hmm. we, we'd read the province, Wyatt Art and I would read the province in high school. And we'd go down to the library. So you'd read, uh, you'd check. I was a bit, you know, I, I would read Gallagher to find out what we were supposed to be outraged about. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just like I mean, I guess I am one of those guys. I wasn't I wasn't conscious of it as much as some seem to be that I love this guy. I wanted to be that guy. You know, I certainly enjoy you know, I mean, my dad would often pick up Sports Illustrated. So, you know, Rick Riley inevitably was a guy that that I read a lot. Mm -hmm. Um I in hindsight, you know, I realized that more than anything what's driven me as a as a as a sports writer um was 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 people who wrote about personalities and and who people are and why they do it and that's still my instincts i try to try to get some of that yeah. why people are doing what they're doing um yeah yeah so yeah i mean the, the, i would say those are the main ones i mean you know it, it's i mean i used to i it was the only guy in town i used to listen to dan russell you know i was one of those guys yeah, yeah. um Absolutely. but yeah. you know uh yeah so there you go well, everyone, people love you. They, I, we only got to a fraction of the questions, but this is more because I'm the one that has to leave, not you. But I don't, I'm not going to keep you for like an hour, uh, like a, to, until midnight. Uh, one last question for you, easy. Who starts in goal tomorrow night? Uh... <laughs> she loves his three and zero. He is three and zero. He did be Arizona. Yeah. Eh. I mean, he's clearly going to be back for the playoffs. I. I think you got to start to Smith. Here's here's why. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, if he starts tomorrow, that tells you that. Well, I don't know what it tells you. I think it tells you to <laughs> Smith starting on Saturday. I don't know. Right. I I, right. I think if to Smith starts tomorrow, that tells you Demko. I, let, let me put it the other way. If to yeah. Smith starts tomorrow, that tells you Demko's back because they I agree. want Demko. They want Demko to get the last three games of the season, right? Yeah. So, so, or maybe you give to Smith that final game in Winnipeg. I don't really so, know. Right. So, Demko but, doesn't have to but, Right. Right. Well, yeah, you could. I mean, no, actually, no, they have. So, here's a, here's a, my, here's my last roster thing to understand. When Demko comes back, Shelovs has to go down because they okay. don't have the cap space to keep them both. Gotcha. There's no roster limit. They can keep all the forwards and defensemen they want, but they need that much cap space. And so, Demko can come back. Um, Having said so that, loves, will so she loves, loves will be back. I think he'll be back for the playoffs. Like, like okay. we were basically asked talking today, are you going to carry three goalies? He goes, yeah, I think yeah. so. So, yeah, yeah. Well, PJ, you are awesome. Even if you forgot about the show, so thank you for. Uh, <laughs> you hey, I was on time. Yeah, no, you more than made up. I just, with it I just stressed you out. No, we're okay. I never get stressed. I, we both of us have very little here to lose. Uh, so we're okay. So thank you for this. Uh, you know, I'd love to tap in one more time before yeah, during the playoffs. Anytime, buddy. You know where I am. As long as not too crazy. So I'll let you go, tend to your family, and then I'll do my wrap up. Everybody's oh. asleep, buddy. No, no, we're, we're, we're awesome. Well, thanks again, PJ. I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> Take care, man. Okay, talk to you soon. Good night. Yeah, thank bye. you. Yeah. All right, friends. That was Patrick Johnston, good friend of mine, and always so... Um, so accommodating and happy to to help me out so i really appreciate him and yeah we talk offline a lot and he checks in on me sees how i'm doing and I, I really appreciate his friendship and and the type of stories that he brings to uh to you as fans so i'm gonna do a wrap up in the next two minutes here then i gotta get going to my church so carol thank you for that wonderful donation earlier tonight and for everyone else um want to thank my sponsors van city experts real estate perform and transform personal training weight loss gassy jack art maker that fine artwork and Vessi footwear. Don't forget my shows this week. Yeah, this is a kind of a, 
a quick uh, ending tonight. My shows this week, tomorrow night, it's Canucks After Dark at 10, right after the end of the Canucks game. And then I'll do my own show at 11.15. And then it is only, it's members only on Thursday. So don't forget about that. And uh, on your way out, you can subscribe. You can like the video. You can leave a donation. You can gift a membership. Buy your own membership. Upgrade your own membership. Use a monthly membership message. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. Thank you, moderators, for keeping this a safe and respectful place. Thank you, uh, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame franchise members for your support. And thanks to all of you for watching, liking, subscribing. We had over 300 people in here once again. Yeah, I, don't, I, I said this yesterday. I can't believe I waited so long to start um, streaming to X, but we had 100 people here on YouTube and another 200 people watching on X. So thanks for all. Thanks to all of you for taking some time, and I hope you appreciated Patrick Johnson. You can see he's such a good storyteller. He knows his stuff, and he's very likable, so I will be sure to bring him on a bit more often as the playoffs go through. I think he'd be a great person to bring on here. And once again, thank you, Carol. Thank you very much for uh, the, your generosity for gifting those 10 memberships. And yes, uh, I was talking to Coach Rob earlier. Shannon had a fall. I was glad that Coach Rob was able to get to her. It wasn't with Shannon when she fell, but was able to get to uh, the hospital and be there with Shannon. So hopefully, yeah, pray for Shannon. And Taylor, I will continue to pray for your recovery from your surgery as well. Okay, friends. I love to hang out more. You guys know how much I love hanging out with you guys, but tonight's the night where I do have to go and get to my church. So thanks everyone for being here. Canucks against the Coyotes tomorrow. Nux 649 going uh, thanks to Shannon's generosity and he'll, and an extra bonus. And I've told Nux 649 this, he'll actually be sitting next to Jacob, my son, Jacob, who will be sitting in the other pair of seats tomorrow's game. Uh, so yes, Vancouver against the Coyotes should be pretty cool all right friends you guys are awesome thanks for being here as always stay safe stay healthy take care of yourselves and take care of each other by the way what do you call a detective who solves cases kind of accidentally sheer luck homes god bless and go chance go Booyah.